Hi everyone and welcome back to the zombies. So, the red zone. The dangerous tier 3 area where zombies are brutal, contracts are hard and death awaits at every corner. But every match you can see blue dots on the map there, roaming seemingly unobstructed in the middle of red. How do they do it? Pretty easy really and I'll try to show you how. While undeniably dangerous, the red zone is manageable even for solos with correct gear, prep and attitude. So let's try to cover it all. In terms of gear, you obviously want to have your three plate vest, a self revive and ideally a large bag. If you're not sure where to get all of this, I'll leave my regaining guide in the description. For weapons, the rarity and a pack a punch level really mean more here than a gun itself. You absolutely want an epic rarity weapon or higher for the red zone. Anything below the purple will be ineffective, even at maximum punch level. If you don't have any spare ether tools to bring into the match, buy an epic or legendary weapon off the wall or loot one on the map. My personal preference is Lockwood 680 with slugs ammo, since it delivers huge amount of damage in combination with very high mobility. But there's a lot of viable options, with many SMGs and pistols working very well in the red. You also want a brain rot ammo mod on your weapon, it comes extremely handy. Not only the zombie you turn can kill quite a few enemies, they also work as a destruction for others, which is never a bad thing. For your choice of tactical and lethal, take decoy grenades and thermites. Decoys are great to distract the zombies and thermites work extremely well against mega abominations. Field upgrade is really a personal preference. I prefer energy mine by far, but it's up to you. It's worth noting that if you are starting from scratch, gearing up and getting money for the full prep will take some significant time, so when aiming to farm the red zone it makes sense to bring as much as possible with you into the round. In the end, the less time you spend kitting, the more time you have in the red. So pack a punch crystals, perks, ammo mods, whatever you can craft or take from the stash, do so. You don't have to bring any of the classified items, but you're free to do so. Quite obviously, ether blades or golden armor makes the whole enterprise much easier. Once you are in the round, the priority goes to getting any items or punch levels you are still missing and finding some meat chunks. Unless you bring a dog bone with you, of course. Meat chunks are reasonably easy to get. There's always a chance they'll drop off the regular zombie when they explode. And zombies have a chance to explode when either an overwhelming amount of damage is done to them or due to explosive damage. An example of overwhelming damage is an epic punch to weapon or higher in the low and medium threat zones. Anytime you see a zombie go off in a cloud of goo, check on the ground for any meat chunks. Normally you should get the required 3 chunks just as you go about your business, but you can also pay a visit to an exfil in a low threat zone. With abundance of easy zombies there, you usually get what you need in no time at all. As you roam around, don't forget to pick up any turret circuits, self revives and sentry guns you come across. They all come handy. When playing in the squad, it's a good idea to pull your cash and items to fully prep one player and then go into the red with them, allowing them to carry the team, instead of waiting for the whole team to be ready. Once ready, grab a vehicle and head over into the red. Your first stop is always a dog house. The dog is essential. The dog will kill for you, die for you, save your life, be your best teammate no matter what. There are three possible dog houses in the red, and once one is used up, the next one activates in cycle, so there's never a situation that you can't get a dog at all. The first one is on the western edge of the red in E4 quadrant. The next location is on top of a hill in northeast part of F4 quadrant. And the last is on the small island up north, right on the very edge of the red zone in G3 quadrant. If playing in a squad, each team member can and should get themselves a dog. Multiple dogs make everything much, much easier. Once you have a dog, get the last pack a punch for your weapon if still need to, and then you're all set. But before we proceed to contracts, Let's talk tactics a bit. First of all, always move. Don't stand in one place at all, since the moment you do, a pack of zombies will spawn right behind you and will mow you down in seconds. Don't hesitate to run if their position seems too hard. Sometimes zombies spawn in some crazy numbers, in particular by the gas station where they pop like a dozen a time every 20 seconds. 
Just bail and take the fight on your terms instead of trying to fight impossible odds. Prioritize your targets. Hellhounds and fast running zombies are to be shot at first. As anything else you can just run away from, but these ones are a problem. And lastly, if you just used your last self revive, that's a good indication you overstayed your welcome and it's time to leave the red for now. Now onto the contracts, since that's probably what you're coming here for anyways. Contracts in red are useful in many ways. They are the only source of Dark Aether Sigils and four schematics, the Epic Aether Tool, Refined Aether Crystal, Tombstone and Elemental Pop Perks. They're also a good source of cash with 5k payout per contract, as well as other high value loot, whether you are getting your stash field or preparing to venture into Dark Aether or take on a Red Worm or anything else really. As of now, there are six different contract types available in tier 3 zone. Hunt, Outlast, Cargo Delivery, Escort, Raid Stash and Sports Control. With the exception of the Hunt, which is kind of randomized, all other contracts have predetermined locations, so when you pick up a specific phone, the contract will always happen in the same place. This is very useful to know and as you complete the contracts, you'll quickly remember where you need to go for which contract. The easiest contract is, of course, Cargo Delivery. And hardest in my opinion is Escort. Escort, in fact, is the only contract I usually avoid in red. Not just because it's harder, but it takes too much time in my opinion. The most fun contract is of course the Hunt. You have a choice of all four possible targets here, with Mimics, Manglers, Disciples and Mega Abominations in the pool. Pretty much everybody knows by now that the easiest way to complete this contract is if the target is close to a deadbolt turret and you have a circuit with you. But that's not always the case and HVT variants of special zombies are much tougher than usual. You do however have another great tool, Sentry Gun Killstreak. Sentries are extremely effective against all targets including toughest HVT bosses. They are also cheap at 2k apiece and available in infinite supply at any buy station outside of low threat zone. If you don't feel like fighting an HVT heads on, Place a sentry as you approach your target and then simply run around it, letting sentry do his job. This way you can keep doing hunt contracts one after another by concentrating your fire on weaker enemies and letting the kill streak do all important job for you. Another really easy contract to do over and over is spore control. Your dog can do the majority of crowd control for you while you are taking care of the eggs. It's a bit on a slower side when doing solo, but can be done very quickly in a squad. Outlast and Raid Stash are really similar to each other and all locations they happen in allow you to take a vantage point, letting your dog do the main crowd control below with you providing cover fire from up top. Covering your dog deserves a special mention too. Just like your dog will help you, it also needs help quite often. Every now and then the dog gets locked onto a specific target but for whatever reason cannot reach it so it gets stuck in one place with zombies ganging up on it. You need to clear those zombies quickly, otherwise the dog can get killed and this will limit your own survivability too. Similarly, while regular zombies are not much for the dog, special zombies are a problem. Disciples are particularly annoying since they can continuously heal off your dog, sucking life from it at high rate. Manglers are a problem too since their attack knocks down the dog. So if you see or hear the dog engaged with a special zombie, make that a priority target ASAP. Now everyone's favorite, Mega Abominations. They too very much like to lock onto your dog, giving you a great opportunity to keep shooting them as you like. Whenever you see the Mega use the laser attack, that's the best spot to shoot them. First head is always the weakest, so I prefer to use my gun to break it. The other two are tougher, but a thermite thrown while they're shooting lasers destroys the head right away. This works on normal and on HVT megas 100% of the time, and is likely the easiest way to kill one apart from a dead bolt turret. Sentry guns are also excellent against the megas, so don't hesitate to place one and meg will never be a problem again. The last note to make. While solo red zone is more than possible, doing it in a squad is easier, safer and all contracts are much much faster. So even if you go in alone, keep an eye on other people in the red. If you see a team that looks like they know what they are doing, come over to them and request to join. 
in most cases, people will accept you and you can continue together. And since you now have an option to leave the squad too, you can later part ways if your plans don't align. I guess that's about all I have to say about living in the red zone. I'll leave the rest of the run as a bonus and reference for how exactly I do it. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. My team was investigating some local anomalies when they went dark. Well, technically speaking, these anomalies are... Focus, Barrera. We'll worry about the science once the spores are handled. That inhibitor produces infrasound, which will disrupt the protective fields the spores emit. I said no jargon, Barrera.
contract. Mark. Vehicle Mark.
fucking contract.
I'm sure Barrera will inform me what he learns from this. All right. What in two or not? Five-finger discount on those terminus guys. 